A few weeks ago I made a video where I went over 7 items I no longer buy as a minimalist. However, there are still a few things that I still buy and I actually enjoy buying. Intentional purchases, if you may. Now, before I actually buy them, they need to fall into two of these three categories. The first category is going to improve my life in a certain way, whether that's physically, mentally, or simply make my life easier in a certain way. The second one is simply because I need it, for example, like toothpaste or food. And the third one is that I want it and I can afford it. I found that if they fall under one of these categories, it simply makes my purchase decisions easier. If it doesn't fall under one of these categories, I simply just don't buy it. And to be fairly honest, it always, always falls under two of these three categories. I probably spent the most money in my life in the last two years in education than I've ever done so. Whether it was a course, it was a book, a masterclass, and even as far as buying my master's degree. I think I've learned so much this past year and it actually changed my mindset. Before I used to think that buying and spending money on education was just a waste of money and now I just see the investment into future, the return of investment into my future self and it actually think, I think that it pays off. We should constantly be learning and I think that a way to keep life exciting is to educating ourselves. Whether that's just going for a course that you enjoy, whether it's buying a book, you should just keep on learning. Whether we spend $10 in a book or whether we spend thousands of dollars on a bachelor's degree or master's degree or even a master class, I think that education is something that we should keep on doing and keep on buying until the day we die. As a minimalist, you're supposed to own the essential, what truly matters. And for me and my girlfriend, that are plants. And a lot of them, I have to say. I mean, they're nice, the decoration, and they change the whole life in the room. All right, so I wanna show you how this space here, you can literally change it with just adding four or five plants. So we used to have our DJ table there, and now it's empty, and for a while it just looked like this, empty, um, boring, and just look how adding four or five plants changes the whole environment. This is just with one. Just look how one already changes everything. Literally just adding a few plants changes everything, the whole environment. You can really see that, yeah, why we like plants. If I'm on the road or perhaps not at home, something that I still buy and quite a lot maybe, snacks. I mean, we all do, I think. I do not carry a bag of snacks around me every day, every, everywhere I go. The only moment I do so is when I go to work where I take my lunchbox, I fill it with fruits and that's it for the day. Well, sometimes I do buy a cookie or two with my coffee, but that's another story. Like, why not? I mean, spending one euro or one dollar or whatever you want on something because you would just want to see a nice cookie when you go out for a coffee doesn't mean you're not a minimalist. So you might as well just, yeah, treat yourself and buy a cookie. And I'm not going to stop buying cookies and that's not gonna not make me a minimalist because that's more in the mindset. Coffee is something I've been really getting into lately, the past maybe four years. As from last year, I have way too many methods of making coffee and I keep on adding different methods. For example, we started with the good old Belletti, then we bought the coffee machine which has two different ways of making coffee, just normal coffee and espresso, so that's already three. Then we bought the French press and then last year we bought, we got a Chemex, sorry if it's a little bit dirty, I haven't used it in a while, being fairly honest, I haven't used it in a while. Last year I got a Hario Veris and for my birthday I got the Aeropress. So yeah, we do love coffee in this house and when people come over we can offer them a thousand ways of making coffee. My morning routine always looks exactly the same, one of us makes a coffee and I have different options to choose from. My girlfriend likes as much and probably even more coffee than me. So every now and then we enjoy going out for a nice cup of coffee outside. I've seen a lot of people cut their own hair. Well, actually shave it. And I've done that myself too. But I've come to realize that shaving my head doesn't suit me and long hair suits me more. Well, actually not long, long, because, well, you tell me which one is better. Leave a comment down below and tell me A, B, C. I do understand that if you're getting bold, you might as well just buy a 
shaving machine and shave your hair yourself, maybe even with the same one that you use for your beard. But I find that going to the hairdresser and cutting my hair once every two months or three is a nice way of me to treat myself. Some, so something I keep on buying are haircuts and I don't want to look like a mess out there when I go to clients or when I go to work. I want to look good to feel good. And having haircuts every now and then is just my way of doing so. When it comes to experiences on subscriptions, I mean, why do we need to cut that, right? Who doesn't enjoy a Friday evening, just sit down, relax, watch Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever your poison of choice is? Or maybe in a cabin in the middle of nowhere or going and visit a big city or even having a Spotify subscription to listen to music while you're at work without ads. When it comes to experiences, it's something that I do not save my money on. But when it comes to subscriptions, I have the bare minimum. For example, I used to have an audio subscription for books and I didn't enjoy it as much. I discovered that I was still reading the book and following it because I would get distracted. So I canceled that subscription. But I do enjoy watching and listening sometimes to podcasts, especially when I'm driving rather than music. So yeah, I have my podcast, my podcast subscription. Going and doing fun stuff shouldn't be something you're saving on, but should be a way of cheating yourself. I mean, we only live once, so we might as well just enjoy life, right? Expensive gym subscriptions. I have to say I go to quite an expensive gym, but on the other hand, I find that it's nicer because every time I go, there's no one. And no shame on that, but the people that spend one hour just on the bench press talking, I don't find that nice. So when I used to go to a subscription that was $20, it was always busy no matter the time of the day. So I went to a subscription that was $70. It was a CrossFit, so it was nice that I would get told what to do. And now that summer is here, I enjoy going by myself. And the subscription is half of that, so 40, around 40. And in the end, I find myself to be going more often just because there's less people there. When it comes to reading, I have to say I used to, used to hate reading. I had to read for school quite a lot. And I didn't enjoy it, so uh, it went as far as me buying the summaries for the books that we were reading from the chapters in such that I didn't have to read the book. That way, if I was put on the spot by the teacher or the professor, at least I knew what we were doing. That's how far I hated reading. Now, when I came to university, I tried to force myself to read some books here and there, and they were always fiction, and I didn't enjoy that. When it came to summer, I'd rather spend my time outside doing something than actually sitting on a book or re trying to read a book when I was all year round just reading and reading and reading. After I graduated, that's the time I actually sat down and started reading and finding what I enjoy reading, which is self-development books and non-fiction books. So I do not save on books. I choose buy quite a lot, especially if I want to have them physically just because I enjoy doing so. Actually, just from last month, I got a Kindle for my birthday. Thanks, mom. And I actually did the maths. And after reading 18 books, you get your money of the Kindle back. And after that, it's just save the money, let's say. But buying the Kindle and having the Kindle doesn't mean I don't still enjoy buying books. Sometimes I just go and get a physical book just because I like the feel and I like having it and be able to read it whenever I want. Especially for example books about storytelling or filmmaking, content creator and fellow friend Robert Creating actually recommended me the basics for filmmaking book and I'm really enjoying it. So thank you Robert if you're watching this video, shout out to him and if you don't know him just go check his content. He made all self-development, productivity, really good quality videos. So go check him out. Before I used to buy cheap quality products from AliExpress and then I discovered that actually when I spend on cheap products I ended up buying them more than once just because they would break more often. So something that I'm starting to do more often is buying good quality products. For example, a microphone or for example, a camera or for example, a phone. Yeah, they last longer and in the end it's a smart financial decision, I would say. There's a saying in Dutch that it's Durkopen is good kopen, which literally translates to expen buying expensive is cheaper in the end. So when you go to buy something, just think of how much you will be spending if you buy a really expensive version of the same product. 
And I think in the end, long term, it's going to be saving you quite some money rather than buying a cheap AliExpress quality, which might break after four or five uses. And even the quality won't be as good as the original product. Now, if you don't know what questions to ask before buying a product or something, just go check out this video here. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.